Hello lovelies and welcome to the first video here on the Lovely Digest. so much for clicking on this video I really appreciate it if you guys do enjoy it please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be sharing a lot more with you guys I'm super excited to start here but also really nervous so if I come across like being kind of ditzy I feel like I come across like that on video so I apologize I'm trying to get my footing on here a little bit I have never really been in front of a camera before. I've done a couple of like fun photo shoots with friends, of course, but nothing like sitting and talking to a camera. So I'll do my best to share my story to the best of my ability. If you've clicked on this video, you know that you're here to hear my Crohn's story. So let's just jump right into it. To start, if you don't know me, my name is Emily. I'm 23 years old and I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in February of this year, 2020. My journey actually started about five years ago. I had a colonoscopy for other issues that were going on in my life. My doctors didn't really know how to diagnose me, so they had given me a colonoscopy just to make sure that I had nothing going on in my intestines, which actually I did not. It was, they were super clear, which is actually unusual because my doctor now said that because I have Crohn's now, usually symptoms start to show up about five years prior to actually being diagnosed, even though you might not really notice symptoms until you know, right before when you're in your first flare. So that was pretty unusual, but definitely a part of my story. So I knew that I didn't really have symptoms five years ago. Um, I did have a hernia, that's why I had the surgery. They just couldn't find it, so I had to have a colonoscopy to rule out any IBD or colon-related diseases. Now, moving forward to about two years ago, I started having really terrible migraines and no idea where they came from. They just started coming on. I had auras where I couldn't see and they would just be really debilitating and it was just super frustrating. They would come and go where I'd get them every day for like a month or two and then I just wouldn't have them for several months and this happened on and off up until February of this year. In November of 2019 I went to go see a doctor for them because they started happening more and more often to the point where my eyeballs felt like they were being squeezed and I would completely lose vision or the whole world would seemingly go sideways so that was really distressing I went and I had a brain scan of course to check for anything really bad luckily that came back clear or actually I never even heard from them so I figured that means it's clear but then after that, I just started getting them more and more often. I did get diagnosed with migraines, but the medication that they had recommended to me, I just had a bad feeling about it. Um, I wouldn't recommend not going on medication. If your doctor does prescribe to you a medication, then you probably should take their advice. Definitely do your own research, which is what I did. And I ended up just not feeling very good about it. I can't explain why, but I ended up not taking the medication, which ended up working out in my favor because I later found out that the medication that they, that they wanted to put me on <laughs> would have been super harmful to the ulcers that were developing in my colon. So in January of 2020, I went on a trip with my best friend to California. It was the most amazing trip. However, on the last day, I just woke up feeling very strange. I went to go take a shower and I just felt really lightheaded and thought that I needed to eat. So I went and ate something and I felt a little better, but then right after eating, I started feeling really sick. So I just wanted to enjoy my last day. Of course, we had a huge agenda planned and I ended up being fine. We made it through the rest of the day and I didn't have any problems. So that night she dropped me off at the airport because she was gonna stay a little bit longer and I was going home and the flight was absolutely horrendous. It also didn't help that I had two In-N-Out burgers about an hour before my flight. They were amazing, guys. Just side note, I never really eat that much meat but they were the best burgers I ever had in my life so of course I had to have two before I can ever have them again but anyways the flight ended up being 
the worst flight I've ever been on. It was just really hot and the turbulence was awful. The plane was going side to side. And if you don't know about Crohn's, Crohn's is very triggered by stress. So I was very stressed out and I didn't know that I had Crohn's, but I was feeling so sick and I thought that I was gonna throw up. Usually how I feel is I feel very nauseous and it's confusing because I want to throw up, but I know that I, I couldn't. That's just not the same feeling. It's like a really bad car sickness feel. So I ended up getting off the flight. It was a red eye, but it only ended up being four hours. And obviously I didn't sleep because of the turbulence. So I got off the plane feeling like half dead. And I went home and fell asleep for six hours. I felt a little bit better, but then that's kind of when I started having periods of really awful cramping where it just felt like my stomach was starting to burn and it would build and it would make me just feel very sick and nauseous for about five to ten minutes and then it would go away. And this would happen every time like I would start to move a lot or I would eat and this is still what happens to me but it's not as bad as it was then like it was almost unbearable where i just i couldn't move as soon as i started to feel nauseous i would just lay down in like straight and just not move so of course i knew something was wrong i went to my doctor uh, about two weeks later just thinking maybe you know it was something to do with the airplane or the two burgers that i had eaten and it was not it ended up hanging around of course i had two stool tests done, five blood tests, I think, and something else, just lots of different tests. Everything came back totally fine. The only things that were kind of off was my inflammation levels in my blood tests were a little off, and then my iron levels were low, which is unusual for me because I donate platelets a lot, and Every time I go in, they say that I have amazing iron levels, like even if I have my period TMI, but it just seemed kind of strange to me that my iron levels would be off. So we knew something was going on, but nothing life altering. I had all the tests done for salmonella and parasites and all these strange things that you could possibly think of. So my doctor, after a couple of visits to her and me not seeing any improvement and starting to lose a lot of weight, she sent me to a specialist because I could barely even get off the couch at this point. I felt super sick. I started having diarrhea. I didn't have it initially. Like nothing, Everything kind of progressed very slowly. So I ended up not being able to retain like anything, any food. Every time I would eat, just immediately go to the bathroom. Anytime I would drink, I would immediately go to the bathroom. And it was just, it was so painful to go to the bathroom to the point where I just, I started to feel like I couldn't do it anymore. I had lost 15 pounds. So I finally got into a specialist. It's very hard, not to be discouraging, but it's very hard to get into a gastroenterologist around here. I don't know how it is in other parts of the US. I'm um, on the East Coast, but no one was taking new patients. So there's one doctor that would take me. I ended up going to him and he immediately said, I think that we should do a colonoscopy, but I knew from my previous colonoscopy that after I had that first one, I just felt off for a long time where my stomach just took a long time to go back to normal. I didn't really feel well. I had a lot of cramping and like gassiness. So I didn't, want to add to the amount of pain that I was in. It was super conflicting because I definitely wanted to get it fixed, but I did not want to have a colonoscopy. So it was about another week until I couldn't take it anymore. And I ended up going in for the colonoscopy, which revealed, of course, that I had ulcers all down the right side of my large intestine. He couldn't even make it into my small intestine. Like the plan was to fully scope out my large intestine and then start to go into my small intestine to see um, if the Crohn's was also affecting that because sometimes it doesn't, which is good, and sometimes it does, which obviously isn't good. So he recommended that I go have an MRE 
which basically is you drink a contrast and then you go in and you have imaging done like a normal MRI but it lights up your body and your intestines so that they can see um, anything like ulcers or weird stuff going on in your body. However, I still have not had that done yet. Um, this was all happening of course right before quarantine started. So by the time I had the colonoscopy, coronavirus was becoming a little bit more of a concern. So. I decided not to go for the MRA just because I was feeling super bad and I didn't, again, want to have to drink a lot of something that tastes really awful and make myself feel worse. I just, I couldn't imagine doing it. So I decided to give myself a little of a break. I knew that I was already diagnosed with Crohn's disease and that I could start on an antibiotic. So that's what I did. Um, I still have yet to go have the MRE just because of quarantine and I also am in the process of trying to switch and become a patient of another doctor up in Boston because I just have better luck with Boston where I am located right now. It's not a super big city so I don't even live in the city, I actually live out in the countryside. So I just felt like I had better luck getting diagnosed with my past condition, the displaced nerve. Um, than I did here where I am, so we shall see. Hopefully my plan is to get into this hospital in Boston and get into their program for Crohn's and colitis and maybe have the MRE done there. I just wouldn't want to have to have it done twice. So after the colonoscopy I came home and I rested. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, the procedure was awful, not gonna lie. I just don't really react well to the drugs that they give you to calm you down before going in and they also didn't give me anesthesia, which they had told me that they would and then they ended up not doing that. So it was just a really bad miscommun miscommunication with my doctor and part of the reason why I kind of want to switch out of that practice. Anyways, I... Didn't feel as bad as I thought it would after, I actually felt a little bit better. I think that the process of cleansing out helped me a little bit to feel better and then I started right away on antibiotics. Those helped me so much. Within three days I started feeling so much better. Um, I was still going to the bathroom quite a lot and it was quite painful. Um, from there I learned that macaroons were a better alternative to Imodium. Imodium was not helping me, guys. It was so awful. It was making me feel so nauseous, but it was not doing anything to back me up or like hold things in. Sorry, TMI. Just wanna be real with you guys. So I ended up doing some research and found out that somehow macaroons helped people with Crohn's disease. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to have sugar anymore, maybe this is the one thing that helps me and also a way that I can kind of still have a little bit of sugar in my diet. So I ended up trying them. Guys, works like a charm. I think it's just the coconut flakes so you can definitely make your own and I definitely need to learn how to make my own macaroons with less sugar in them, but they're delicious and they help so much. So definitely recommend. It sounds a little witchy and a little strange, but trust me, it worked. About a week out from the colonoscopy, I decided to start working out again. I still needed help getting up and down the stairs. Um, before this, I could barely, I couldn't even shower. Like I needed help going to the bathroom. I needed help doing absolutely anything, like changing. Um, just because I was super weak and at this point I was diagnosed with iron deficiency as well because I was losing blood in my intestines. Um, I still have that but I'm doing so much better. I feel so much stronger because I did start working out and all I did was I went out to the deck outside on really nice days. I just laid in the sun and did like held onto the railing and did calf raises. I just followed a couple of YouTube videos that um, help you get back on your feet after an injury where you might have lost a lot of muscle mass. So even doing calf raises was really exhausting. Um, 
I just did really simple things like a lot of yoga where like cat and cow pose just things like that to help slowly start building up my strength and I was actually quite surprised at how fast I got my strength back and now I am I can proudly say I am so much stronger and I weigh more than I did before I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease so that has been a really big help to me and something that I'm 100% gonna stick with working out is surprisingly the only time that I do not feel any pain it's the strangest thing because I was very fearful thinking that if I did too much movement that it would actually aggravate my symptoms because I had noticed that if I was starting to not feel well and I got up to move around and that's when my stomach would flare up but I don't know I also was reading that if you get the blood flowing to your abdomen it's actually hard to get the blood flowing in your abdomen so when you're working out or doing yoga it's doing that and it's helping to invigorate your organs I don't know the scientific terms but essentially that's what I imagine happens and it makes me feel so much better at this point, I also was eating very blandly, like just orzo. Um, I was having hard-boiled egg whites, not the yolks. Um, white toast is really easy to digest even though it's high in sugar. So my mom found um, sourdough toast is actually very good and easy to digest, as I'm sure you guys all know from the trend now. And white bread, like she found some white bread that doesn't have any high fructose corn syrup and has... A minimal amount of ingredients so I've been having that and it's just super easy to digest again like I said and that's basically what I was eating I decided in that moment that I needed to start eating healthier because my goal was to not have to go on any biologics right off the bat especially with coronavirus I didn't really want to have to go into hospitals like so many times to get the injections or the infusions so I decided to hold off because I was doing really well on the antibiotics. I came off the antibiotics in March, late March, and I have been off the antibiotics since then. It is now the end of May and I'm starting to not feel well again. I think I'm going into another flare, but it's not as bad. And because I don't have to go to work right now, I'm not in a rush to try the antibiotics again to kind of push it off or jump right into a biologic so I'm just kind of in this waiting phase like seeing if I can get myself out of it by kind of going back and eating blandly again and then slowly building up strength so when it came time to start trying new foods I started doing the elimination diet so this name is kind of confusing because it, I wasn't eliminating things I was just slowly adding things in so I would add in some turkey into my diet and some other little meats and <laughs> little meats <laughs> things like that and just seeing how my body reacted to them i learned that nuts seeds anything with a skin is a big no cook all your vegetables just basically make it as easy as possible for your body to digest things and the reasons why i don't have seeds or nuts are because they can get stuck in your ulcers and basically I think that's what happened to me. My doctor said that he believed that I had a really bad abscess in my intestines that got infected and that's why I was having I was having fevers of 104 every single night and yeah, it's gross. So at least now like I don't have fevers every single night. Knock on wood. So even though I'm not feeling well, it's not like I'm having an infection on top of it all because I'm not eating seeds or anything that could aggravate it. I also don't eat citrus or tomatoes. Um, I will definitely go into this in another video. It's a long list. Like, it's not an actual official diet that I follow. It's just general Crohn's guidelines that I follow. So let me know in the comments below if you want to know more about my diet. But moving on, I was very successful in adding a lot to my diet. I started um, using protein powder because protein shakes didn't agree with me. Um, I made my own smoothies every day and that's how I got my fruits and vegetables. 
I started taking glutamine powder, which helps rebuild your intestines. Again, I can go into this more once I've actually compiled the science behind it. I can share it with you guys. I'm just kind of going off of what I know off the top of my head right now. I also take these pills from Love Wellness called the Good to Glow pills. You can look up what's in them, but it's a lot of good stuff that I was taking for my skin originally, but I looked up all the ingredients and they actually help to contribute to a healthy gut. And then I also recently added in spirulina tablets into my diet. I'm not sure how much they're helping me. I'm going to keep taking them because they're not harmful to take in any way. So I'm just going with them, seeing if they help. Maybe they help um, keep certain nutrients up that I might be lacking, um, but I haven't really felt a difference yet like in um, the way that I'm feeling every day. So now all of that, my diet and my exercise routine has come together to make me feel so much better. Again, I haven't been feeling that well recently, but it's definitely leaps and bounds better than where I was in the beginning. So I hope I remembered everything that I wanted to share with you guys. I almost forgot that I had 104 degree fevers every night, but anyways, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will maybe do a part two. I just don't have a lot of followers yet, so I figured it would kind of be pointless to ask if you guys had questions on Instagram at the moment, but maybe in the future, if more people start to follow, then I can do that. I also left out some of the more intimate details of having Crohn's, but if you guys are curious or want to relate, then I will definitely, I have no problem getting into the nitty gritty of it with you guys, if it means that I'm helping someone else get through this as well. Um, I just figured I'd leave it out while the majority of the people watching this video are probably going to be my family and friends, so you're welcome. <laughs> But essentially that's my story with Crohn's. I can't wait to share more of it with you guys down the road and I really hope to